Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to a exhibition match between Vicarin and Cron Aberrant on Tomb of Heroes, a brand new map that just came out a couple days ago. I'm ShadowPC3, your host. So, Vicarin, we see, is on the right. Got randomized to the right. He hasn't chosen his race yet. Oh, he is choosing CISO. Well, Cron Aberrant has gone for Grekum, and he is just getting up everything, getting his RPs in position, moving his Arcticus forward as normal, and getting his Faro build. So, standard economic start, and Vicarin is doing the same thing, getting his RPs built. He is looks like he's going for a standard six. Yes, he is six on LC and setting his special ups out towards the center of the map, actually, towards this expansion. I'm just gonna go over the map right now. So both players, as we saw, have main bases on the left and right sides of the map near the center. To the north, there are neutral teleporters, which will allow access to most of the north half of the map. And there are also bases, a 5LC, 3QP base on each side. There is an island in the center with 4LC, 4QP, and like I said, the center expansion as well with 4LC, 4QP. To the south, there are two expansions. There is a 4LC, 2QP expansion directly south of the main bases, and another 4LC and 3QP base at the very south of the map near the center. So back to the players. Vikran, oh sorry, Crown Abbott is going immediately for an Octo Attack. At a minute in the game, he's going for an Octo Attack. He's going to follow him a bit more closely. Yes, the Octotech is going definitely towards Vikran's base. He is committed to that. Actually, he was committed to that a while ago. While Vikran has his Special Ops and Ring going towards the center, he doesn't seem to be actually going for a direct attack. He is... Looks like he's trying to very quickly expand to the center. He is quickly expanding to the south base, building an importer over in this little nook here, rather than making it in his main base. Interesting little move. And the Octos are coming towards the base of Vikran. They, are, they will be hitting him, and he is aware of it, definitely... Where the blue time loop has come, he knows there are Octos coming in, so he knows that Cronamron is going for this. Vikran does not seem to... Well, no, he is changing his strategy up. He is keeping a Special Ops and Marine in his base to stop the Octos from harassing him. While Cronabrant is back in the past, he is turning those Octos into RPs. He is not ultimately... Or, sorry, these are different Octos. He is still attacking with the Octos. He has not changed up this attack yet. He is still putting the pressure on Vikran. So Vikran has to make sure to be careful. He can't be moving out his attack forces over to the center of the map. He has to have them close to his base, but that hasn't yet propagated from the looks of it. Yes, it hasn't yet propagated. The red time wave will be propagating this. So Vikran is in a bit of a tight spot. He can't move out as much as he'd like to. He is building a ton of importers along the southeast side of the map, though. And like I said, he has LC, RPs, the main base, and then the expansion of the south, while Crown Aberrant has decided to go more for LC and QP mix. So we're still seeing the green time wave iteration. Vikran's forces are at home, however, on the red time wave and will be able to block off the Octos. The Octos are continuing to attack. Crown Abbott has not changed this up. He does not appear to be changing this up anytime soon. He is, in fact, at the present, and he is focusing on continuing to build up and tech up, using the Octos as pressure. He probably won't be pulling back. This is probably not an echo attack. This is probably a committed attack, even though Vikran will be able to stop it on the red time wave. See that the Octos are coming in, and the Octos are about to attack. This is the 241 mark when the Octo is hit, and the the Special Ops and Marine will be attacking it. They will be able to damage them slightly, but the Octos are, of course, very tough units. They can take quite a bit of punishment, and they won't be going down that quickly. As we can see, the... Oh, okay, that was bizarre. Looks like... Oh, it's discontinuity, sorry. The players had slightly modified the orders, but it looks like, regardless, Vikran is going to be... Losing his forces that are attacking the Octos. They aren't going to be able to do much. He is jumping back continuously to try to stop them. What he had before, he lost both of his forces to the Octos. One Octo still alive. He is jumping back. Both players have been jumping around this time a lot. This, At this point, he is setting up an armory, trying to sim city around. So the Octos have a much harder time getting to the Marine and Special Ops. Unfortunately, the Special Ops and Marine are... Oh, that, that was bizarre. Why are they attacking the armory? Okay, that's probably a mistake on, on Vicarin's part. But now the Octos will have to go... A much longer distance to get to the Marine and Special Ops, so they will have a much harder time fighting them. The Octos are going around. They are being hit by the Special Ops and Marine, but they decided just to go for the Armory instead. No, they are. One of them is going around. The other one is a bit confused as to what is shooting it. But the one going to the Special Ops will be destroyed. The other one is attacking the Armory, which won't amount to much. So, Vikran looks like he will be able to defend this successfully rather than unsuccessfully, as had been previously happening. So, that being said, Cron Amaran is setting up Another Seppi, well, this is the Seppi he had for his Reef. Let's jump towards, towards the present. This is what Crown Abbott is going for. He has advanced structures at the present, at the five minute mark. He is focusing on this 
at the 333 mark, probably going to be getting advanced structures still when he normally got it. But Vikran did successfully defend, having to build a second armory though, which is not really necessary. And Vikran, of course, is trying to build more RPs around the map. And he hasn't gone for the north at all, so neither player is going for the north. Both players, or Vikran's going for the south. Kron Aberrant hasn't expanded out yet. But it looks like he is not going primarily for expansion, he is going primarily for fast tech. It's a bit of a risky build, but the thing is, he does have. Well, I guess his main base, which does have a fair amount of resources in it, and both players... By the way, this is on version 1.2, so the economy is a bit slower than normal. Vikran's forces, what he has so far, is only really useful for building some infantry and getting more RPs. But the thing is, he doesn't have a whole lot of RPs. He has some RPs. Now he's starting to get RPs at this southeast base and getting a factory as well. So, he's almost proxying more than anything. Not really proxying, but he is going outside of his main base. So, he's spread himself somewhat thin. His main base is... Not super vulnerable, but his southeast base is vulnerable. His importers are very vulnerable. So Kron Aberrant could easily, if he scouted those out, he could easily attack them. But I don't think Kron Aberrant is aware of that. Or maybe he hasn't even considered the possibility. He is focused entirely on setting up his own base instead. Setting up a spire. He does have the spire. He does have... He doesn't have enough QP actually to build any air units yet. Right now he's just setting up progenerators. More progenerators. Setting up another reef. Getting a bubble wrap going. So, focus on a, a very small one base game, while Vikran has about three bases so far. They haven't yet paid off. They're not going to pay off until about the six and a half, seven minute mark. But when they do, it's going to be quite scary. He does have the importers that are providing reserves. He's using those right now on infantry, as we saw coming out of his main base. Tons of infantry. He is also getting machinery. Oh, no, sorry, not machinery. He is getting ground units. That will upgrade his marines and allow them to deal tons of damage when they actually hit Kron Aberrant's base. So that's going to be fairly scary. While Kron Aberrant, on the other hand, has got a second pod built up, he might be getting Pods as well, but I don't know. I, it looks like he's thinking still in terms of version 1.1.1.0, .1 where air units were more dominant. Building a Sepipod as a counter to air, not a bad idea if Vikran decides to go for Lancers, though Lancers tend not to be Vikran's style. Going back to the 520 mark, we see that Vikran is actually going for ATHCs, not Lancers, so Sepipods still useful in this case because Sepipods are detectors. Anyway, Sepipod coming in will be attacking the Marine, won't be able to deal a huge amount of damage to it. That's odd. It must be something off here. It's... Okay, there's something weird going on here. I don't know why it doesn't appear to be dealing damage to the Marine. That might be just some network lag. No worries, though. The second pod has scouted at the central base. He does know that Vikran is going for this. He... V Kron Aberrant is not in a great position right now, given that he hasn't built up a lot of economy. He's been mostly focusing on that opening attack, and the thing is, he used that opening attack to get some tech, but he didn't use it to cover an expansion, which would have been a really good idea, because when you attack like that, it's best to do it to cover an expansion. So Vikran is able to get Marines around, both in the south base with an ATC support, probably going to build more RPs down here. He is starting to get himself into a rather explosive position, at least for infantry. He hasn't gotten any mass error or anything, I think. Pharopods would be, not I think, I know, Pharopods would be a great idea right about now. The best thing Kronhammer could do would, build, would be to build some Pharopods and some Pharos. Because Pharopods are Grecum's crowd control unit. Octopods would also be useful, and they are cheaper on QP, but they aren't as high in splash damage. And Kronhammer is indeed going for a Pharopod, so we'll see how that works out. I'm I'm guessing it'll work out decently well, though two Pharopods would be better. The the infantry army does have special ops in it, and those are detectors, so the cloaking the Pharopod has will be completely useless with the detectors. And Sepipod is able to deal with some one of the Marines going around. He is trying to hit Vikran in the Marines, as Vikran has often suggested players do. While the other Sepipods scouting around, finding Vikran's bases around the map, and starting to harass them, which is a really good idea, puts the pressure on. However, at the same time, Vikran is attacking from the north, and will be able to attack without the Pharopod interfering too much. Both players have jumped back slightly, they are trying to rebuild everything. It looks like... Not rebuild everything, sorry. They're trying to get the orders going. ATC and Marine have come in towards the southwest base for Kron Aberrant. The Sepipod will be coming up to try to deal with that, though. And Kron Aberrant does have a Sepipod dealing with this. Has destroyed the Marine. Will be able to destroy the, the ATC soon enough. Pharopod coming towards the south, which is exactly what Vikran wants. Vikran is sending his infantry army from the north and slightly from the east, but mostly from the north. Has his armories in his main base. The main thing he does not have right now is Chrono Energy, but if we were to jump towards the present and start macroing, he'd be in a great spot right now. Near the present, he has tons of resources. Chrono Aberrant has a few, but Vikran ha is saturated. So Chrono Aberrant needs to go to the north and deal with this. I don't know if he's aware of this attack happening, but he does need to go attack to the north, deal with all of this. He has a dome... No, not a dome. An octopod in his main base. 
which will help, but he has not sent anything to deal with this yet. I'm not sure why he is not going to attack this force coming in. They are attacking this QPRP quite heavily, have disabled two of them, and are attacking... Nearly, well, killed one, nearly killed a second. They have killed a second, they are on the way to killing a third. Gotbot finally coming in to attack, and Vikarin jumping back. Looks like he's going to try to change his order. Crime also changing his orders around. He isn't actually sending, he's sending his Farpod to attack Vikarin's base. He's not sending it to deal with these units, which is a very bad idea. The Farpod is, like I said, the crowd control unit. Autobots are great against infantry, but really, Farpods are the crowd control unit. They're Vecur, sorry, they're Grekim's crowd control unit. They are the, the Vec, they are the Zion Pulsar. They are the Mar tank for Grekim. That's what they do. So, it's a bit unfortunate that he's not sending it to this base. However, fortunately for him, he did hit the hierarchy leader of Vikran's infantry army. There is a secondary leader, though, and Vikran does not have, he doesn't have auto hierarchy, but he did have a secondary leader involved. So, the command chain was not completely destroyed, and Vikran is actually going towards the present now. He is building a ton of infantry. He's absolutely packed with infantry. His factory, however, towards the present has been destroyed. The Farpod dealing a fair amount of damage. I still think the Farpod should have been used on base defense. That being said, Vikran... Has Vikran aborted the attack? I don't think he has. I think he simply lost the attack. Yeah, Kronhammer has managed to successfully defend. So, despite not having the Farpod there, Kronhammer successfully defended. I don't know if he defended as effectively as he could have. But the Farpod here is still a, a useful thing to have. Not sure why the Farpod is not attacking at this point in time, though. It is attacking later on. It, The big thing, though, is this Macrofab. The Farpod attacking now would be able to damage the Macrofab, destroy the mech that's building it. While Vikran is retreating as well for the HHC, is at the 906 mark. And Vikran has started to expand to the north. Kronhammer has not really expanded much. He has that base to the south. He is, however, pushing out with Octopods, trying to deal with what Vikran has. Basically punished Vikran for over-expanding. And Macrofabs are taking quite a bit of damage while still under construction. The mechs, however, are anti-air units, so Kronhammer needs to be careful here. He's not focused at this point in time. He's probably assuming that this will still work out. And the thing is, these are only a couple mechs, so it should work. However, he might lose his Epipod in the process. It looks like he will lose his Epipod in the process. Yes, he is in fact... No, he's not. He just barely kept that Epipod alive. Macrofab almost done, though. So Kronhammer has not yet had to deal with this. He does have... Oh, nice! He has actually progenerated an Octoligo in the middle of Kronhammer's base... Or, sorry, in Vikran's base. So, Vikran... We'll see if he gets punished for this over-expansion. I hope he does, just because I would like expansion to be an option without being dominant. But we'll see how Crown Amber actually pulls this off. Nice to see that he did get legal class, though, and should note that Vikran has also gotten machinery at this point. So this Octoligo will be very useful. The Macrofab has been destroyed, so Vikran does not have that Macrofab, hasn't been able to use it for anything. And the Armory towards the center expansion has also been destroyed by the Octopods. Vikran focusing more heavily on the north expansion. His main base is not actually building any units yet. He's not actually spending a lot. He has no Chrono Energy left, or very little Chrono Energy left. He does have a Tornado being built out of his main base, though. And the Sepipod, of course, is almost dead. The other Sepipod... Oh, my. That... Double-check this battle here. Looks like... No, the Sepipods did rise up, but one of the Sepipods was destroyed by a mech. The other units were out of position at the time. So this Tornado's going to be able to deal a ton of damage until the Octoligo comes in. Octoligos are... Grackham's basically anti-everything unit. They're effective both against ground and air, so that will be effective to get rid of this Tornad. However, the Tornad is a bomber unit, so it won't be able to destroy the Farpod that quickly. It will, however, distract it while a tank comes out, and the tank will be much more effective against the Farpod than the Tornad is. But the Octoligo has not... Oh, it has been built! The Octoligo is done, it has destroyed the Tornad, so the Farpod is now free to attack at will. I'm going to fast forward through this. So we see the Farpod is actually dealing quite a bit of damage. The Octopod, or Octoligo has not been moved forward. Kronhammer not focusing at this point in time. The, nor the center base, the Octopods have destroyed Vikran's expansion. Vikran's north expansion, however, is still fairly safe. Tanks coming in and being teleported. We've got to follow this thing. It's going to be teleported somewhere, and I want to know where it is going to be teleported to. Oh, it's going to turn into a heavy tank first. Keep an eye on that tank. It's getting teleported somewhere. And Kronhammer building up more Sepi Pods, moving his RPs, his... RPs are actually done, moving them towards the north base. Sorry, his main base is pretty much mined out now. So moving RPs towards the north base. Getting a heavy tank for Vikarin is... It's not teleported yet, but it will be teleported soon, I'm sure. And the Octopods are coming in at the 1207 mark. Incidentally, Vikarin is getting gate tech. These are, like I said, the neutral teleporters. He is actually building a chronoporter right next to this neutral teleporter. And the Octopods coming in just in time to see that tele... See that chronoporter and see the units about to teleport away. I'll probably use the chronoporter and then teleport it as the idea. Heavy tanks will, however, be able to fend off these Octopods but not without taking at least one loss of their own. That heavy tank is... Oh, you know what? No! The Octopod got distracted and got destroyed, so the Octopod will not be effective in destroying that. 
Vic Vicarin's Chrono Border has been revealed, however, so Chrono Hammer will be able to counter that eventually. And I'm sure Chrono Hammer is actually quite concerned about that particular Octopod getting destroyed in that attack, seeing what's going on, seeing there's a Chrono Porter there. Vicarin is... his Chrono Porter is actually done at the blue time wave, so he's going to be able to Chrono Port back and then teleport from here, so Chrono Hammer needs to be very wary of unplayable past attacks. And Vicarin is... okay, he's looking at the present, he does not have any Chrono Porters yet, but he does have the Chrono Porter up here. He does... okay, a Farpod is coming in, however, for... Crown Aberrant, it will be able to destroy the Heavy Tank before the Chrono Porter is... Oh, recharging. Yeah, recharging. Initial recharging, right. Chrono Porters will recharge when they're first built. So this Farpod will be able to take care of that attack, but I think Vicarin will be likely Chrono Porting back that Tornod that just... Well, Chrono, chrono Porting back a Tornod. Not that particular one. That one's dead, obviously. It's very difficult to Chrono Port back a unit that does not exist. It, however, is very easy to Chrono Port back a unit that does not exist yet. And indeed, a Tornod is being built and will likely be Chrono Porter back to help deal with this Farpod that is attacking the heavy tanks and attacking the Chrono Porter has destroyed the heavy tanks in fact. I'm not sure if Chrono Hammer is planning to destroy the neutral teleporter. I doubt he will. He's more focused on the Chrono Porter and that really is the more salient target right now. But it looks like Vicarin is likely to be Chrono Porting back that Tornaut. I'm just going to keep an eye on that timeline because that... Oh! Oh, here we go. There is actually a Chrono Port happening. Oh, there was a Chrono Port happening. I'm not sure where that went. Gonna keep an eye on this though. There is... This... Well, this heavy tank is being teleported away towards the central base, but there is a chronoport happening as well. I'm not sure what units were chronoported. I gotta double check this. Looks like this heavy tank was probably chronoported. The other heavy tank was teleported. And let's see. There is no, I'm not sure what was chronoported actually. It looks like the chronoporter just sort of went off and did nothing. I'm I'm not sure exactly why it looks Oh, that's why, because the tornado's in the air, silly me. That's what I was looking for, that tornado. So, that Tornod is what has been chronoported back. I... or... no, this... damn it. The Heavy Tank was supposed... looks like it was supposed to be chronoported back, but it doesn't matter. The chronoporter has been destroyed regardless. So, the Tornod cannot have been chronoported, but it was... <sighs> this is frustrating. I'm not sure why chronoport... normally you get an alert too when chronoports happen. I'm not sure why that didn't happen. But, that's beside the point. The point is, Vikran has attempted to chronoport, but nothing has actually managed to come out of it. No units ended up going to the past. The Chrono Porter was destroyed in time, so Chrono Hammer doesn't have to worry about it. Chrono Hammer, however, getting his own get his own Chrono Porting, which will be very effective. And once that comes in, Vikran's going to be in a world of trouble. He does have a heavy tank coming in, though. He's going to try to destroy what he can of Chrono Hammer's forces. Chrono Hammer hasn't expanded a whole lot across the map, but he's starting to expand quite a bit. And Vikran has lost a couple expansions in that counterattack that. Chrono Aberrant did. He hasn't lost this North expansion. He only lost the Chrono Porter. Chrono Aberrant didn't destroy everything. He simply destroyed that Chrono Porter. Tornod coming in towards the North base trying to attack Chrono Aberrant's RPs will do a pretty good job of that too. While Chrono Aberrant does have three Far Pods which will likely be sent back anytime soon. He does have his Chrono Porting ready so I expect those guys to be sent back as soon as possible. And they're being cloaked. They're likely to be Chrono Porter back once Chrono Hammer decides to do that. Looks like he's focused more on getting this Octoligo into the main base. More infantry coming in. Octoligos aren't great against infantry. They're okay against infantry, but they probably would overkill. And Chrono Port has occurred. Octopods here at the north side of the base to help fend off attacks com that coming in from the heavy tank that was teleported down here. And of course, we saw this destroyed the Tornado that was originally Chrono Ported back. Not actually being Chrono Ported back, but still being built. And. So we have the Octopods here, they are supporting themselves, attacking protecting the north, this front expansion. While the Octoligo, this is when it was destroying the southeast expansion, the 1412 mark. And, of course, when the Chrono Port was destroyed. Here's that heavy tank that the Octopods were sent back to destroy, and they will successfully destroy it before it deals any real damage. So Chrono Hammer pull, pulling himself quite a ways ahead with Chrono Porting. Vicarin, however, attacking the north base, will be dealing quite a bit of damage in the north. And that was the Octopod Chrono Port, I believe. Though, it's hard to say because Chrono Hammer is probably Chrono Porting back a ton of stuff right now. And he did actually Chrono Port back... He Chrono Ported further. I think he... I'm expecting him to Chrono Port back those Faropods, but I'm not sure where they are. I cannot find these Faropods here. I'm expecting he'll Chrono Port them back at some point. But he hasn't gone and done that yet. In fact, they're not even on this point in time. But on the green time wave, they are being sent towards the north base where Chrono Porter has been rebuilt. They are not being Chrono Ported back yet. And here we are. Two of them have been Chrono Ported back. I was waiting for that. So, two of them have been Chrono Port back, are on the red time wave, are damaging the tanks, but unfortunately they have been detected. 
and are being destroyed. They're not going to last very long. The Sepipod, however, is able to deal quite a bit of damage. Attacking the off... Oh, attacking the mech, but it's still able to get the mech fab up. The Tornod will be destroyed. No, it won't be destroyed. The Sepipod will be destroyed before the Tornod is destroyed. The Tornod will manage to destroy the Sepipod and stay alive just barely with 10 health left going towards the north base. That was the Tornod we saw before. So the Farpod Coronaport did not turn out to be as effective as I had previously anticipated. And Cronimer, rather low on QP too, he only has 64, it's not enough to Cronimer much of anything yet. He does have a ton of LC though, I'm not sure if he's going to try to use that to expand, get more QP. He really needs, right now, since he's Cronimerporting a lot and also building a lot of air units, he is extremely Q Plasma dependent, but he mostly has LC RPs, and I'm a bit surprised he isn't building up a ton of Octos to build up a ton of QP RPs. And at the same time, Vicarin hasn't actually rebuilt any of his expansions. Both players very focused on maintaining the timeline, maintaining their own causal stability, keeping units in the past if they need to in order to keep everything alive, but these Farpods, like I said, were, were not effective in the past, so nothing really has changed for Vicarin from that attack. However, Cronhammer is attacking the main base and will be dealing quite a bit of damage. The Octoligo is actually able to destroy most of these forces. While not an anti-infantry or anti-swarm, sorry, not anti-swarm, anti-infantry might as well, but not anti-swarm, he does have or it does have very long range. Not sure if Octo would map to he. I've never been quite sure about how, how the Grecum sexes map to human sexes, but it's Octoness. Octoli is Octi. There we go, Octi. Octi is attacking the main base. Well, Seppi is also attacking the main base. But nah, it's too confusing. Forget it. Anyway, Fari here is getting killed. So, the other younger little Faros are. Going towards the main base, straight line towards the main base, Kron Aberrant is focusing towards the pass. Both players are focusing very heavily on the pass. Hasn't really expanded much. A couple of Octos have managed to, well, try to attack this heavy tank here, but they aren't going to be effective in destroying it, as we just saw. Kron Aberrant focusing a bit further in the future. He hasn't actually, sorry, a bit closer to the present, which is not even further in the future. Neither player is even two minutes away from the future. But Vicarin is certainly further in the past. Does have a heavy cruiser, but not very effective. The heavy cruiser on its own is not enough to get through this. While far pods are actually being able to destroy the main base here. Far pods coming in from the north. It looks like not a chronoport far pod, just more far pods being sent in. Managed to destroy this. And no chronoporters at the north base for Vicarin. So no chronoported units here to save him. However, there might still be chronoported units towards the south. No, he does not have a chronoporter yet in the south. He does have a factory and an Two factories, actually. So he could easily get a mech up there and start building more Chronoporters, but I don't know if he's going to be going for that quite yet. Chronoport is, however, like I said, has Chronoport. You can Chronoport anywhere. Building Octos and Faros. I am towards the south base. Not sure why Octos and Faros, not Sebi's and Faros, to build more RPs. Because that's what he could really use. He has tons of LC. Also, just a ton of base cost units, period. But tons of LC. He needs his QP to Chronoport. And looks like Vicarin is focused on the unplayable pass. Double checking what's going on. Let's double check towards the future if it doesn't have any chronoporters. No, north base has been destroyed. The south base is taking heavy damage. And the middle base is also taking heavy damage from the Octoligos. So I'm a bit surprised Vicarin has... He's saturated a lot, but he doesn't have a lot of... That's the thing. The entire game, he doesn't have a lot of chrono energy. He hasn't really gone to the future much, or even the present, to macro. He's mostly been focusing on mac on just handling the past. So while he has a ton of resources in the bank, he hasn't, doesn't have the chrono energy to actually deal with anything. However, it doesn't matter. He does have a Martan coming in from the north, though. His north base has been saved? Okay, it looks like there was that heavy cruiser that came in before actually managed to save the north base from the far pods. Heavy cruiser and Tornado coming in. So that north base is not destroyed. It will ultimately live. So Vicarin able to save that, but his main base has been destroyed with his armories. He is building another... At the southeast base, he's building another Corona Porter, while Corona Aberrant is taking over the left side of his map. He does have a dome protecting the LCRPs, but no QPRPs still. St still no QPRPs, and his forward expansion has been destroyed by the Tornado. But Seppi's coming in to destroy that Tornado, make short work of it. And Chronoport departure has been detected. It looks like Vicarin is likely sending. No, not Vicarin. Chronoport would have been doing it because Chronoport. Yes, here we are, Chronoport arrival. And the Octoligo has actually been Chronoport back to help destroy the main base a bit faster than before. Not that it really matters, though, because Vicarin, like I said, is saturated in resources. He has quite a lot. He hasn't spent much of his resources yet. While Crown Abbott has been spending a lot of his resources, so he definitely has an army advantage right now. Moving everything across the map, getting everything where he needs to be, taking over the center as well. So the left side of the map is pretty much Crown Abbott's, although 
Oh, nice. Bickering is building a little turret in Crown Amber's north base. Crown Amber has not actually gone to deal with this yet. I'm not sure if he's aware of this or if he's focused on that. While well, Bickering's southeast base does have a corner porter ready, and the corner porter has been made. Looks like he is focusing a bit further towards the Amplopo Pass, realizing what's going on with the Octoligo. But hasn't actually sent back units to deal with it yet. I'm sure he will, but he hasn't done it yet. He actually doesn't have a lot of units built up at this point in time. He is getting a couple more heavy tanks. Likely to send those back pretty soon. And Chronoport Departure has been detected, so that's, that would be Cron Aberrants. Yes, these Seppies have been Chronoported back. And will be there to help deal with the Tornado to stop this expansion. This is forward expansion. Consider it safe. These Seppies are here, ready to save the day. Three minutes later than really necessary, but they came back anyway. They came back to save the day. Good on them. So, this corner porter is definitely open. It will be useful quite soon, but Vikrin has not actually made use of it yet. Still focusing heavily on the past. Oh, no. Vikrin does not have a lot of QP. He has a lot of LC, though. And he's using that LC to, like I said, build a base inside a base to destroy Crown Aberrant's RPs and doing a very good job of it. Crown Aberrant, like I said, really needs to build more QP if he wants to get the air units and corner porting that he needs. And he does have three more QP RPs at the south base. He has his entire army in the middle going towards the north. Going towards the northwest base, trying to protect or at least destroy what Vikrin has. While a cruiser comes to destroy the base, and no, I guess you can't consider it safe because Crown Amber and Seppies are not in a position to actually deal with this yet, and these Seppies are not focused to any, are not linked to any Arcticus either, so they can't easily go back and help out. But Crown Amber, a bit further in the future, is. He's chronoporting back. Let's see what he's chronoporting back here. He has chronoport back two Octos to help deal with that mech. So, if it works out well, he should be able to eliminate that mech before it actually becomes a problem. Here's the two octos in question. And I'm not sure where that mech was, but it came down here at some point. Quite, well, about 2257 mark is when I started building stuff. So, it will have likely been destroyed once the red timer comes along. Yeah, it looks like it was probably just teleported in. Yes, this mech, in fact, was teleported in. The Octos are in position, but they... Oh, the mech is going to attack them, so the Octos, Chronoported Octos, will be effective in destroying this mech, stopping this huge base that was being built, so Vikram will not ultimately be able to stop that north expansion. Nicely done, Crown Aberrant. So we see that the mech has been destroyed, and Vikram is not in a position to actually deal with this base. So this entire thing that Vikram has here will not ultimately happen, though Crown Aberrant is sending a bunch of forces up to deal with it, which is a mistake. It has already been destroyed. At the same time, a heavy cruiser coming in towards this south base, and has mostly destroyed the front base as well. And at the same time, Vikran is rebuilding. He has rebuilt the southeast base. His north base he's starting to rebuild. He is destroying Crown Aberrant's south base with the heavy tanks. Just dealing with it slowly. However, Vikran, once again, he does not have a whole lot of units built. He has a lot of money in the bank, but not a lot of units built. And, oh, more corner porting going on. It looks like, well, like I said, this has been taken care of. So it's not a big deal. But more corner porting has been going on. More shenanigans. And Vikran appears to be also going for shenanigans of his own. I gotta double check where he went to, though. So unfortunately I don't get the little markers here where chronoports happen, because it'd be very handy. Anyway, the only chronoports Vikram could have are over here. Cron Aberrant is, is sending back units, though. Like I said, so this section is safe. And... Cron ah, is sending back... Let's see, more units. He sent back an Octopod, actually, to help deal with this. And he has replicated his entire army in the center, or much of his army in the center. And getting... Here we are, chronoporting back to Seppies to help once again, have gone back to save the day from the heavy cruiser. So, this heavy cruiser here has been destroyed. It won't actually have been there, ultimately, once the blue time wave comes along and propagates that change. So, Crown Aberrant has managed to take over the center. Neither player has taken over the top center, though. And the bottom center... So, the... Well, the south base is... Vikran has his... Crown Aberrant has lost his to the heavy tank, and it doesn't look like, even on the blue time wave, anything's going to change that. He does still have a southeast expansion... Sorry, southwest expansion on the blue time wave. So, that's safe. Crown Aberrant, still a little bit high in the economy, but neither player is pushing their economy enough for it to matter at this point. What really matters right now is strategic maneuvering, and Crown Aberrant, speaking of which, has gone to this north base here. I'm guessing he is planning on, Kron or has chronoported back a bunch of units. 25-25 mark, destroying the mech, destroying everything here. So, north base for Vikran is being destroyed once again. Vikran having heavy tanks around the map helps deal with this stuff, but not well enough. And his Corona Porter is not being used. Not sure why he isn't using that Corona Porter. It's just sitting there idle. Vikran is building up units around the map. Oh, no, never mind. I know why. He has no Corona Energy left. But he has jumped back to around the 2705 mark, sending a heavy tank up to attack this base here, take care of the Seppies, and destroy that base once and for all. 
And here we have Chronomer's forces in the north base as well. I'm not sure why they're over there. Chronomer really should... He has the Chronomer to do it. He really should be sending those forces forward to attack. And... Oh, never mind. He actually did. That's the that's the attack we saw here with the forces in question. Being teleported in. Handy. So, yeah, once he gets the teleport going, I guess he already did that. Chronomer pointed back the units at this... Base, I think that okay, okay. Just so you know, the chronoport that occurred here still occurs, so there's no worries there. Nothing has gone unstable. However, at the same time, Chronoport has chronoport a bunch of his units back to help protect the north base, and a Martin coming in towards the north base to try to deal with it. The Octopod will not be able to get rid of it before it is destroyed itself, but it put up a very valiant effort. The Octo up here might be able to take care of it, but it's not going up to actually damage it. And Chronoport is not sending in more troops to deal with it, while. Heavy Tank and Cruiser are coming in towards the center of the map to deal with the expansion, and here we are. The Green Time Wave, Vikran's north base has been destroyed from the Chronoported Grecum units. His main, south bases are still viable. His main base is gone, though. Still gone. He hasn't bothered to rebuild it. It's mostly eaten up, though. I mean, look, the LC boxes are all done. The QP boxes, one of them is not completely done, but the rest are pretty much done. And Faro's coming in here. Not sure why they aren't dealing damage to the Heavy Tank. I guess they're on a move order. Which is rather unfortunate because they'd be able to take care of the heavy tank no problem. While other heavy tanks are going towards, like I said, this forward base here. And Vikran, like I said, he has tons of money. He is queuing up a bunch of tanks. Really should be building just more factories, period. You just build more factories and use that to build more units. Though he does have a lot of money anyway. He will be able to spit out enough units to help at least keep himself alive. Crown Emirate does have an advantageous position, though. He does have control of both teleporters. Not just his own. And he also has far more units. The only thing is that he doesn't have as much... No, he has more economy now. He does have the economy outpaced against Vikram. He has about one base... Yeah, two full bases against one... One and a half bases. Because this base is mostly mined out. So the heavy tank here coming in towards the forward base. Dealing quite a bit of damage. The other heavy tanks as well. Vikram's heavy tanks are dealing quite a bit of damage. The base class units trying to do what they can to destroy them. One goes down, but a lot of the Faros have been destroyed. It looks like Vikran actually... Never mind, the base class units coming in. More units coming in to deal the damage that needs to be dealt, but they aren't attacking, necessarily. They are sort of attacking, but not necessarily. Many of the Octos are going to try to build RPs, getting destroyed in the process, but those that do attack are dealing quite a bit of damage. Both players jumping back to the 29-44 mark. Trying to get this attack even more effective on both sides, but it looks like Vikran's probably not in a great spot right now. Crown Emirate has been building tons of base class units with the LC that he has, the LC surplus he has, while Vikran is focused heavily on tanks. Not a bad unit to be focused on, but he doesn't have a whole lot of QP, he has a lot of LC. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't tried to go for more infantry or go for... Well, Mar tanks are kind of evenly expensive in both resources. Or... Well, I'm not sure what else he could go for, really, at this point. That doesn't involve some QP. Still, heavy tanks, maybe not the best idea... And it looks like Chronomart actually... Oh, he did Chronomart back a bunch of units. He Chronomart back this entire army as well to help deal with the heavy tanks. So the heavy tanks that are there are not even going to be as much there as they were before. And, of course, this north base has been destroyed in the unplayable past. So Chronomart showing very effectively how scary Grecon Chronoporting can be if you don't have a way of dealing with it effectively, especially if you don't have a lot of units on the map. Another Chronoporter has been built in the southeast base, and along with a teleporter... Allowing this heavy tank to go towards the center, but not much can be dealt with in the center. And it looks like... Okay, Vikran is going for more production, which is what he really needs. He isn't actually using a lot of it, though. Like I said, very low on CE. And the chronoport pressure has been detected. It looks like it's probably the one that we saw here for Kron Aberrant. So yeah, Kron is in a great spot with chronoporting. Vikran hasn't really used his chronoporting much. He does have a chronoporter, but he hasn't actually made much use of it, which is unfortunate. So, Crown Amaran secures the center section of the map. The 31-30 mark, you see that Vikran is trying to attack with some heavy tanks around the map. Deal with damage he can. And specials is being made for Vikran as well. He will be able to get Nanite Infection and... Let's see, and TSS. So I think, if nothing else, these current porters may be used for the Temporal Solution Shield. The Invincibility Shield that CISO has. This will be effective, though... It depends on how many Sebi Pods there are in here. Sebi Pods are, if I recall correctly, the Shield Breaker for Grecon. The more Sebi Pods there are, the harder it is to keep that up. And 
Right now, there are no Sepi Pods. Cronhammer could easily build some and Chronoport them back, though. This is a bit of a risky move, but if it pays off, Vikram could be in a great spot. Cronhammer is at the 32 13 mark, sending a ton of forces towards the south bases for Vikram. Vikram has a couple of heavy tanks attacking Cronhammer, but Cronhammer is just assaulting with a ton of base class units. And Cronhammer jumping backwards. Looks like he's probably going for a Chronoport. Yes, he is actually Chronoport back, a ton of Octos to do an uppercut on this base. However, this base is mostly mined out, so it's not particularly effective. It's still, however, effective partially. And back at the 33-13 mark, the entire army has destroyed this southeast base. While Vicar and Prost trying to deal with damage he can, more is coming in to help destroy the heavy tank, also destroy the heavy tank. Bunch of tanks for Vicar in, in the southwest expansion, and looks like Chronoport Departure has occurred. Not for Vicar, though. That is the Chronoport Departure for the Octos, most likely. And it looks like... Now let's double check. Yes, it is the, those octaves we saw in the Unplayable Past dealing with damage they could. And yes, here we are. Temporal Solution Shield. Dealing tons of damage, preventing these Martanks from being destroyed, and this Heavy Cruiser as well. I'm a bit surprised he didn't put a nuke in the Heavy Cruiser, though. He doesn't have weapons, mind you, but or Aerospace. But if you got Aerospace, put a nuke in. That would be extremely effective in dealing with these guys. And aerospace TSS Nuke. Sorry, yeah. TSS Nuke Cruiser. But Vikran has to deal with these forces. He has to actually attack them. He is going a bit in the wrong direction for attacking them. Jumping back continuously to help deal with these. He is now going in the right direction to deal with these base class units. While Karnaber is also putting in a flank attack from the southwest. And it... Oh. Has Vikram Karnaber back something? I don't think he has. I need to just double checking what's going on here. No, there's been a Karnaber, however, right next to the the Krona Porter. Destroying the mech. The mech that's going to build the heavy... Oh, no. That's the mech that's going to be building... The Macrofab, I think... No, there's no Macrofab there. Never mind. There's no Macrofab there. The Macrofab that was used was the one down here. So, don't worry. These units are still causally consistent. But, Cryamberant, still in the great spot, like I said, making very good use of this Chronoporting tech. And, really, I think Vikarin, honestly, should have gotten the TSS sooner and should have gotten... Uh, actually, double-checking. Has a Sebibot been built? No, no Sebibots have been built. So, Cryamberant, not going for Shield Breakers yet, but he is getting... Assaulted heavily with the heavy tanks and the max coming in towards from the south side towards the southwest base attacking the octos and I think really Cronhammer could have got more QP, but now he has ton of, tons of QP using it very effectively to port and it looks like Oh, he just, he just realized now. Yeah, there's there is a shield. You don't have a sepi pod It's not that cheap of a trick, but it is a trick It is there and it is quite effective at stopping anything from killing a unit because nothing can kill a unit that's got TSS Except I think a chrono bomb. I haven't actually double checked that. I think because units with TSS can't chronoport or teleport, it, it's supposed to kill them. So I think a chronobomb would actually kill these units. But I'm not 100% sure. I have not tested it. That being said, Vikran is not actually attacking this. He does have the chronology to do that, but he is going to focus more heavily on the attack towards this base. Seven bots have been built. They are in a good position to deal with the TSS, though. One of them is going to... No, it's not. It... No, oh, never mind. Both players jumping back towards the 35-15 uh, mark. Seven bots are... Going around, they are having to deal with some heavy tanks though. Destroying one at the east side of Cryamer's base and coming towards here to help deal with the expansion. Sorry, the expansion, the TSS, well, the bases, the expansions that were there, but also deal with the shield units. The Sebi Pods, however, not actually dealing with the shield units, kind of unfortunate, but because that's the unit he needs, that is definitely the unit he needs. Vikran does not have. Does he have Chronoported units back here? No, I do not see any Chronoported units back here. He is double checking the Unplayable Pass, but I don't see anything being chronoported back. He does have enough chrono energy to do it, but he isn't actually going through with it yet. He is building more infantry, he is building tornados as well. While well, Sebibot's coming to attack the factories and the shielded units are attacking the north. Cronaburn looks like he is chronoporting back once again. Chronoporting back more units from the looks of it, or at least he's checking the Impelable Pass to scout out where to chronoport to. Jumping back to the 36-20 mark, we see that Cronhammer's forces are now sweeping towards the south base. Vikran is in a very bad spot, and the Sepi Pod has... Looks like he's been shot back, and will be able to help out in this attack. I'm not sure where exactly, it, or when exactly it got shot to, but it did get chronoported back, so this attack is going to be even in a worse position than before. So Vikran's defense is being withered down by a combination of chronoports, and at the same time, though, or at least the 37-17 mark, Vikran is sending in a ton of units, and these are, as far as I'm aware, causally resilient. There's no way for Cronhammer to, to trivially destroy them by destroying their factories in the past. But that being said, Cronhammer is sending back these Sepipods to help destroy these RPs and factories. And they are going to be going in with the, their past, or their, yeah, past selves to 
help out the the attack in the first place. Though we see there's discontinuity on here. The blue time move does carry the change at the 3532 mark. We see now the Seppi Pods are attacking the factories, dealing even more damage, dealing with it quite effectively while the shielded units are not in position to damage everything coming in. Vikram has not actually been attacking them with much, and it looks like... Oh, I wonder what Karnamra is talking about the bug. But anyway, looks like Vikram, however, will be able to sweep around and deal enough damage to destroy this. So Karnamra, while he was able to destroy quite a bit of what Grekum... Sorry, with the Grekum, quite a bit of what Vikram had with his army, it looks like Vikram has managed to sweep around and counterattack, dealing enough damage to actually... I think he's going to be able to destroy Crown Amber. I don't think Crown Amber has much of a chance right now. He sent all of his units to actually destroy this. Oh, I see. He's getting a lag issue. Because unfortunately, Crown Amber is suffering some lag problems. But anyway. Looks like Crown Amber will, unfortunately, be losing this game. That was really nice. Almost got the comeback, though. I just think if he had spent... He had gotten more QP early on, gotten a larger army to attack, and more Lego class units too, like either Sepi Legos or Octa Legos, and really focus on attacking with that, he would have been able to tear apart Vigran's forces. Still, nice back and forth game. That was really entertaining to watch. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I know I certainly did. So anyway, have a good night everyone.